Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So there's been some really interesting developments in regards to the Activision Blizzard buyout, and I want to talk about it, so let's get into it. So basically what's been happening is that Xbox has been going through the various global trade commissions to try and get the Activision Blizzard deal approved. This is something that every acquisition has to go through, but bigger ones like this tend to take longer and get a little bit messier along the way. In particular, we're going to be talking about what's been going on at the Brazilian Trade Commission because apparently they're one of, if not the only, trade commissions that makes the documentation of these proceedings public knowledge, with of course the exception of a couple of redacted things that the various companies don't want to have put out there, which is understandable, of course. But because we're being able to sort of get a glimpse behind the curtain, we're able to see the arguments that these various companies have been making that we have to assume that they've been making across the globe. And what we've seen is that Sony is kind of throwing a little bit of a temper tantrum. More specifically, the Brazilian Trade Commission sent out this questionnaire to basically every publisher in the games industry, and some that I don't know if I necessarily would qualify as being in the games industry, but are certainly nearby, uh, and some that I hadn't even heard of, to be honest with you. and. Almost every single one of them had no issue with the acquisition whatsoever. I've pulled out a few just to make note of. Warner Brothers had absolutely no concern, saying that the barrier of entry into making video games has been lower than ever lately, uh, and there's apparently an especially high amount of redacted answers from them, which to me implies that they either were or are a potential acquisition target by Xbox or somebody else. Um, Ubisoft has no problem with it, saying that there is no game that is without competition. Uh, Bandai Namco, again, had no problem with it and says that every game is unique and therefore no one game can be a monopoly, which is a very endearing mindset for them to have. Uh, Apple had no problem with it uh, and seemed to kind of blow off the idea of even being asked to weigh in on it. Uh, and Riot Games doesn't expect any anti-competitive effect post-acquisition. And then there's Sony. And to be clear, I don't actually think Sony is saying or doing anything wrong here. I mean, they're playing it up, don't get me wrong. Like, they're making this seem like a much bigger deal than I think they actually believe it to be. But it's understandable, right? Like, Xbox is their number one competitor and they want to do everything in their power to try and make sure that they don't become as much more powerful as the Activision Blizzard deal would make them, right? So I understand why that they're doing it. It's just that because they're the only people who have put any level of dissenting voice on this acquisition, it makes them feel especially petty. And it's really weird because they specifically only focus on Call of Duty, right? Like Xbox is getting a ton of IP out of this deal. World of Warcraft, Candy Crush, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, tons of stuff, right? But they only talk about Call of Duty in the answers to this questionnaire. They claim that Call of Duty is too big to compete with, that it's a genre unto itself, and that no other studio is capable of making something to rival it. Which is crazy, because basically everybody else who was asked was like, yeah, Battlefield is a competitor, Fortnite is a competitor, Apex, Rainbow Six, right? Like. Everyone else specifically was able to name competitors, so they kind of just immediately devalued what PlayStation said here. And on top of that, PlayStation is kind of low-key throwing shade on their own studios, unintentionally, I'm sure, by saying this. Because it's like, okay, well you guys just bought Bungie, which, depending on who you ask, is either one of or the best first-person shooter studios in the game right now. So if you're saying that there isn't somebody else who can make something that can rival that, then like, why did you buy Bungie? I don't know, it just, it feels really weird. And, and they act like PlayStation won't be able to survive without Call of Duty, despite the fact that both Nintendo and Steam, the two biggest platforms in gaming, have not had a Call of Duty on them in years. I think over a decade in the case of Nintendo, I might be wrong on that, but it's it's been a really long time. And like, both of those two platforms are doing significantly better than either PlayStation or Xbox. So I really don't think that Call of Duty is, is going to be make or break for PlayStation. Um, and again, I also don't believe that PlayStation thinks it'll be make or break. I just think they're playing it up. Um, but I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's like, 
they're saying that like it would be a huge detriment to them, but it's if your company can't survive without a third party game, a single third party game, then maybe your company isn't put together that well. Maybe you've got a little bit of a problem, right? Uh, and I don't think that you can pin it on Call of Duty or Xbox for making that problem exist, right? They also go on to say that no one else could put the same number of employees or the same amount of resources or expertise into a game, which is just simply not true. You know, we see that same level of, of resources and expertise being put into things like Grand Theft Auto, things like Assassin's Creed. Like, there are thousands of thousands of thousands of people who work on multiple franchises. In fact, Sony could even put thousands of people onto a single franchise if they so chose. They have the, the manpower to be able to do that. Now, they wouldn't do that. And they shouldn't do that because it would be a detriment to their overall first party output. But the fact of the matter is that they could. So I'm not really sure that this part of the argument really holds up particularly either. You know, it's it's also weird because it feels like when you say that, like, oh, nobody else could put as much work into this to this game as, as Activision puts into Call of Duty, right? And it's like, okay, so like, are we saying that it's not fair? that Activision works so hard on Call of Duty? Because that seems like a really, like that seems like an outlandish thing to say, am I wrong? Like, it's not fair that they put so much money and so much effort into making these games amazing every single year, although apparently Vanguard wasn't very good. I actually haven't played a Call of Duty since like Black Ops 2. <laughs> so if I say anything wrong about Call of Duty uh, in terms of like the games themselves, let me know. I'm not an expert. However, it's, it's just, it, the other side of it, right, is it's like, okay, well, if you're that afraid of Xbox owning Call of Duty, then you should be happy, honestly, because, like, if Call of Duty is, is this big juggernaut and you want to be able to compete against it better, then you should be happy that Xbox is buying it because two of the things that they've immediately said are that they're going to stop having Call of Duty being annualized, so you won't have to compete against it as often, and they're going to take some of the teams off of Call of Duty and let them do other things, so there'll be less people working on Call of Duty. So, like, you're basically getting what you want without actually losing a whole hell of a lot. They specifically they cite this 2019 study that I could not find um, that shows Call of Duty being the only video game franchise to break the top 10 biggest entertainment brands, which is weird because again, I could not find this study. And if you do a quick Google search on what the biggest entertainment franchises in the world are, it's a completely different list. The top 10 are Pokemon, which is Nintendo, Sanrio, Hello Kitty, uh, Mickey Mouse, Winnie the Pooh, Star Wars, Mario, again Nintendo, Disney Princesses, which is for some reason its own separate category, and Pan Man, which I've never heard of, the MCU as separate from Marvel in general, uh, and Harry Potter. So of the top 10, there are only two, there, there are two video game IP in it, neither of which are Call of Duty, and also neither of which are owned by Xbox because they're both owned by Nintendo, although there's there's some question about the ownership of Pokemon. I think it's actually like a split ownership. I did a video on it a while ago, but I don't remember exactly how that works. Um, and if you go down the list of you know those, those biggest franchises, right? Number 11 is Spider-Man, which is not owned by PlayStation in the game space, but is owned by it in the film space so they're actually higher than anything xbox currently or would own post activision blizzard right although i don't know if i would count spider-man and then you keep going down and it's like okay call of duty is number 17 so it is pretty high but then after that world of warcraft is number 40 league of legends is 41 uh final fantasy is 47 candy crush is 50 grand theft auto is 52 fortnite is 54 Minecraft is 72 and Halo is 78. The list that I found went up to the top 170 media franchises, right? Like the most highest grossing media franchises, entertainment franchises on the planet. And in that entire 170, there were zero that were owned by PlayStation, unless you count Spider-Man, which is debatable. Um, so I think maybe that's the bigger problem. Like maybe that's what they're really upset about is that they're the only of the big three that doesn't appear on that list uh, without concession. 
I don't know. But either way, the numbers that they are providing for this, I could not find. I'm, I'm assuming that they must have, they must be true or have been true in some metric because you wouldn't knowingly put false information into a court document. It's asking for trouble, but I couldn't find it. Um, but the fact that there's no PlayStation IP in that top 170, I think maybe that's the bigger problem here. Like maybe PlayStation just doesn't know how to build up an IP. Um, they also go on to say that Call of Duty, that Xbox owning Call of Duty will lead to people buying an Xbox over a PlayStation, which is, I think, one of the stupidest things that they could have said in this because it's like, yeah, of course. Like, they wouldn't have made this deal. Like, they wouldn't have spent all that money if it wasn't to better their platform. You know what I mean? Like, what? Like, wh <laughs> it's like, uh, this... <laughs> This person should not be allowed to buy this thing because they want it. It's like, <laughs> okay. But, like, tell me why that's a problem, though. Right? It's it's super weird, right? You know, especially when you consider that PlayStation makes similar deals for similar reasons, right? Like, making Spider-Man exclusive to their platform, even though they don't own the video game rights to it, right? Um, like, making pretty much every major Final Fantasy game exclusive, like having exclusive Star Wars content in the KOTOR remake, although that might be canceled now, so who knows. Um, and also, PlayStation has had the marketing rights for Call of Duty since pretty much the beginning of the last generation. So, like... And they've been using those marketing rights to make people believe that Call of Duty has been exclusive to PlayStation when it when it wasn't. If you go online right now, you can find I think it's a, a one terabyte PS4 that has a Call of Duty you know artwork on the front of it and says exclusive on it. And then if you you know read the fine print, it's like has some exclusive content for the PlayStation platform. But like you know the big sticker says exclusive and it has a picture of Call of Duty. So it's like. I don't know, what are we doing here? Like, clearly you bought those marketing rights because you wanted people to buy a PlayStation over an Xbox, so why is it not okay for Xbox to buy Call of Duty for the same reason? Like, is it not fair because they spent more on it? Because they were more willing to commit to it than you were? Like, I, I don't... I don't get it. <laughs> right? And it's especially weird because... Xbox has, again, already said that they're going to keep Call of Duty multi-platform. They even want to put it on Switch because it's one of the biggest video game franchises on the planet. It makes more sense to keep it everywhere. They did this with Minecraft, although that one was contractual. For the exact same reason, though, they would have probably kept it multi-platform anyway because it makes so much money on these other platforms, right? Like, it kind of works as a Trojan horse to be like, hey, you have this on your PlayStation, on your Switch, on your PC, but if you come to Xbox, you can get all this other stuff and you can get Call of Duty for cheaper. You know what I mean? So it's... The only thing that PlayStation is losing by having Xbox own Call of Duty is the marketing rights. And as far as... As far as a PlayStation gamer is concerned, the only thing that is going to change is what logo pops up at the end of the Call of Duty commercial that they see on TV or whatever, right? Like, it's it's a big deal for Xbox, but I don't see how them losing the marketing rights is going to be make or break for PlayStation, is what I'm trying to say, right? It's it's very strange to me. The, the only other thing that they talk about PlayStation talks about in their questionnaire is Game Pass. They go on to talk about how if they did something like Game Pass, it would cause them to lower the quality of their games, which is, first of all, an incredibly bold thing to say, considering that Xbox was the publisher of the year last year, having more higher rated games than anyone else, That not just that year, but also in any singular year in all of video game history. Um, and all of those games were in Game Pass, with the exception of, I think, Deathloop. So it's like, clearly you're wrong in the video game space, but then if you even just take like one step out that to other streaming services, it's like, are you trying to tell me that all those Disney Plus shows are of lower quality than the things that you would see on cable? Or are you telling me that Stranger Things is of lower quality than something you would see on cable? Like, I don't, I just don't understand the argument that putting something into a streaming service would cause you to create a lower quality video game. 
The only way I can see that being true is if the person making the game, for some reason, took it less seriously. And if that's the case, then that's a management issue and not an issue to do with the platform in which it's being released on, right? That's a completely unrelated thing, in my opinion, <laughs> right? And also, it's a really strange thing to say, considering that they just launched their own streaming service in PS Plus Premium and Extra, or Extra and Premium. The, the naming of it is very strange to me, and I haven't gotten it down yet. But it's like, okay, so are you trying to tell me that the games that you put into your streaming service of are, are of lower quality? Because, like, people really liked Stray. So, like, what are you trying to... Like, are you telling me that Stray was bad? That the other games that you put into that service are going to be lowered in quality? Because I, I don't understand the argument. It just... It doesn't... I don't get it. Right? And then... They even contradict themselves in their own Game Pass argument by saying the Game Pass is too good for them to compete with, right? So it's like, okay, well, is it is Game Pass ruining the games industry because it makes games worse, or is it too good and you can't compete with it? Which also is another weird thing to bring up because, first of all, there are other com competitive forces, like other competitive video game streaming services or video game you know, subscription services like... GeForce, like EA Play, like Ubisoft Plus, and like PS Plus, which launched uh, as PS Now before Game Pass. Like, you can't penalize Xbox for supporting Game Pass and making it better when you started the streaming service, the, the video game streaming service thing, and then you just didn't support it, you didn't do anything special with it for so long that Game Pass was able to come in and pass you up completely. Like, how can you blame Microsoft for that? That's like, you, you can't blame the tortoise for winning the race if the hare fell asleep on the side of the track, right? Like, that's not the tortoise's fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, I just don't understand it. And of course, Xbox immediately threw this back in their face, like just a couple of days later, you know, in this 27 page document that was just honestly a really funny read if you can track it down i highly recommend it um if you're into that sort of thing but they they pointed out that sony is the only person who have any level of problem with this deal and that that makes sense because they're the direct competitor they point out that sony contradicts themselves at multiple points in their own argument against it they point out that sony is the market leader and that they are clearly just afraid of having to compete again because <laughs> at post this deal going through and they point out a bunch of Sony's anti-competitive practices, things like forcing developers to pay Sony a fee if they want to have cross-play on their game, right? I think they call it like a lost revenue fee or something because they are under the impression that enabling cross-play on a multiplayer video game will cause Sony to lose sales of that game, which is, I, I think we can all agree, pretty good gross and not okay right but the number one thing that gets pointed out in this that people apparently didn't know about beforehand was that playstation pays to keep games off of game pass and i want to get out ahead of this this is not the same thing as buying a timed exclusivity right okay because i've seen a lot of people trying to make that argument they're like well why is it not okay for PlayStation to pay to keep something off of Game Pass, but it's okay for Xbox to buy a publisher and keep those games off of PlayStation? First of all, buying a publisher and buying a third-party exclusivity are already different things, because if you buy the game, or the studio that makes it, and then you are making the decision to not put that game on other platforms, that's your decision to make. When you buy a third-party exclusive, you are paying somebody else to make a certain decision that benefits you. Those are not the same thing. I have no problem with either of those things, although buying the studio is clearly the least gross version of it, right? I have no problem with third-party exclusives, timed or otherwise, right? My only problem with it has ever been with specifically the Final Fantasy VII one, where it said that it was exclusive to a certain date. There were stickers on the box that said it would stop being exclusive at this specific date, and then that date passed, and it's been a year since that date, and it still is not on other platforms, even though we have seen advertisements for that game on those other platforms, which is very strange, and I don't know why nobody's talking about it. But no, 
we're, what them paying to keep things off of Game Pass is talking about is how Elden Ring was supposed to launch day and date into Game Pass. We know that this was true. We have seen the documentation for this. But PlayStation paid them not to do it. We also know that Resident Evil 8 was supposed to be in Game Pass and that PlayStation paid for it to not be on there. This is them paying these developers to do nothing because they don't want those games to be on Game Pass because they are under the impression that if it is on Game Pass that it will cause them to lose sales of that game. Which, sure, maybe, I don't know how much that holds up, but it's not the same thing as buying a third-party exclusive. It's a lot grosser to me, right? And on top of that, Jess Gordon has uh, came out sort of in the aftermath, if you want to call it that, of this revelation and said that Sony has also been paying different developers specifically to not show their games at Xbox showcases because they don't want the games associated with Xbox. Like Sony is going hard in the paint to keep games off of Xbox or to keep the association away from Xbox, right? That is anti-competitive. It might be smart, it might be good business, but it is anti-competitive, right? And I think we can all agree to that. Now, what does this mean going forward? I don't know, right? I don't think that there's any way that this can actually affect the deal. I don't think that there's a trade commission anywhere in the globe who's going to say, oh, well, if Sony doesn't like this deal, then I guess we can't let it go through, especially when they are the only person being asked who seemingly has any level of problem with this at all, right? This deal is going to go through one way or another. Now, are there going to be some concessions made? Maybe it gets put on paper that Call of Duty has to stay multi-platform, but they were going to do that anyway, so who cares, right? Like, whatever. Now, it's my biggest thing about this is that PlayStation is acting in these documents as though they didn't know that they were going to be made public. Because I can't imagine a world in which they would knowingly let people see this side of them. Because... It's a bad look, right? It's people have come out of this saying, "Oh, they're scared, they're worried, they're, you know, afraid of Xbox." And I don't think that that's true, but there's no arguing that it makes it look that way, right? When you are the only person saying there's a monster under the bed, like you look like you are the one who's having a problem here, right? You know, they're coming out and they're saying Call of Duty is irreplaceable because they don't know how to make a multiplayer game. That's why they bought Bungie, right? They're mad at Game Pass because they had PS Plus first and they let it die on the vine. Xbox, in the last couple of years, has spent nearly the same amount of money on acquisitions as Sony is worth. And I think that there's a side of Sony that sees that if Microsoft is willing to put that amount of money into the game space, that it's not impossible that somebody else might also be able to put that amount of money in, right? And genuinely, I think this is just another point against Jim Ryan leading this company. He, he's been leading this PlayStation into the ground, right? Their stock prices are lower than ever. They're th down in the basement. They are through the floor, right? They're on their third lawsuit of this year, and it's only... August. They had two for sexual harassment and a third uh, that's going on right now. I think it's a class action lawsuit related to them potentially hiding a, a critical fault in the play PlayStation 5 hardware, right? Their attachment rates are lower than ever. People are not buying first party PlayStation games. Uh, they, they can't even get their own fan base to play their games. They are crunching their employees so bad that they are either leaving the company or leaking the game, right? They're telling Sony Bend that they can't make another Days Gone because it wasn't successful enough, even though it did perfectly fine, and then putting that extremely talented studio on a side project for Naughty Dog. And, and then Jim Ryan himself, every time he opens his mouth, he puts his foot in it, right? He, he talks about, oh, we believe in generations, who wants to play old games, services don't work, you know? Uh, respect people who want to tear down Roe versus Wade. Here, look at my cats. Like, every single time this man talks, he says something he should not have said. This man is destroying the company that Sean Layden built. And I know, you know, he gets credit for having, you know, saved the PlayStation in Europe. But based on the things that have happened since he's taken over, 
it seems an awful lot like maybe there was somebody else behind the scenes who actually should be getting the credit for that because this company is going downhill. I mean, hell, look at the games that they've put out this year alone. Look at Horizon Forbidden West. Look at Gran, Gran Turismo 7. Are those games both very good? Yes. But over the last five, six years, when was the last time that PlayStation put out a game that was so buggy you could barely play it? Because Horizon Forbidden West was that for me. When was the last time PlayStation put out a game that had to hide microtransactions from journalists and then bring them in afterwards so that they could make a little money on the, on the sly, right? It hasn't happened, but it happened in GT7. I don't know what the caveat for God of War Ragnarok is going to be, but I'll be honest, it's got me a little bit worried, you know? And if I'm worried about it, PlayStation is a publicly traded company, which means that Jim Ryan and the executives don't actually have the final say in what happens at that company. If those shareholders get cold feet and they don't feel confident in the way PlayStation is being run, they could very easily go panhandling to a Jeff Bezos or a Tim Cook looking for a buyout. I don't think at this point that it is off the table for PlayStation or Sony as a whole to be bought by somebody else. I'm sure that the mouse would love to have the Spider-Man rights back, you know what I mean? So this is a worrying time if you're a PlayStation fan. Sorry for going on a tangent there, but that's all my thoughts on this topic, and I'd love to hear what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm way off base? I might very well be way off base. I won't be upset to hear it. So just let me know what you think. We've been seeing a lot of great support on this channel lately. Subscribers are going up at a rate that's honestly faster than I thought it would be, and I really appreciate that. So if you like this content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, maybe share it with a friend. Uh, it really does mean a lot to me, and I, I would love for this channel to grow to the point where I can actually make a living off of this because I, I love doing it more than anything else that I have going on right now. Don't tell my boss. I don't think he'd be surprised. Um, but anyway, until next time, I'll see you around.